New Tech Lures production. Fishing that new jig technology. Well, we're talking about that new jig technology here with Bo James. And uh, we've had a lot of emails, Bo, about hooks and vertical line ties and Texas rigging. And it's just so many emails to answer. I think we're just going to shoot a video and, and direct yeah. people toward it. So the first thing is um, we'd like to show you our new Blitz football head, which has just got, got here. Um, again, it's got new jig technology built into it. It's got camming surfaces. It's got specific angles all over the head. And it uh, does the same thing. Um, pulling it along the bottom, you can see how it raises the hook up. When you, as soon as you pull it, nice action. Yeah. Um, pull, pull, <laughs> pulling over stuff. The the cams help keep the hook out of the way. You see how it just rolled over. So uh, a lot of people I know. Uh, football heads they wedge in rocks pretty bad and you're hung up all the time but you can see how that does it does the same thing it works in conjunction and it keeps the head from wedging it just rolls over stuff in fact they sent us lead heads at first out of the mold then they sent us some painted heads to approve and then the new heads and we're still fishing them three original lead heads they sent us yeah because we've yet to lose one yeah and we haven't tied on a painted head yet. Same same way with uh, hooking. Is what you're looking for? Oh, that stupid football head. Here it is. So here is pretty much anybody's football head with weed guard and everything. And you know to show you the. It, you know, it's fighting the hook over the side. I'm just going to set the, the dowels down on that so it'd be just like a fish and I'll let go of that head. And you can see immediately it's fighting the hook over the side. And so it's doing the same thing when you're setting the hook on the fish that center base weed guard is continually fighting the hook to a flatter angle. So I'm not saying you don't hook fish, you most certainly do, but there's times because of that flatter angle that the hook's going in it it's hooking you know not deep into the flesh it's not burying all the way to the pull line of the hook i think it'd be fair to say that when they do hook fish they're poorly hooked because they lose a lot of them at the boat yeah you know we watch it on film all the time so i'm going to do the same thing with this one and you can see you know it's not going any place you're going to hook the fish through the top of the head every time and you can see the rotation of it. Yeah, lay rolls it, up there and, and hooks. Lay it flat, like if it was in a bad bass's mouth. Yeah. Even our jig's laying flat. Rotates up and hooks top of the head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see it instantly rotates. I did it slow here. Missed him that time. Oh my God, we missed a fish. Let's see. So, same way with the uh, original head. Now, the, the difference in these two, the original head, and of course you can see that the football head is much wider. The football head falls like a football head. It, it, it falls just mm -hmm. straight down to the bottom. And the original head has more of a horizontal attitude like that when it falls and it also turns off where this one just goes punk. Right. And so there's, you know, I guess application for both. A lot of them like that straight down falling. And so you can see that fish is like normal. The next, the other thing we got is our new 3 16 head. And you can fish these with skirts. What I have do uh, for years, of course I've had this and you haven't, but we got them on the market now, is I do not fish a Texas rig, a, a traditional Texas rig. I fish all my plastics behind this head or the quarter ounce. 
and you can see there's a finesse worm and how it just blends right in with it. So it's perfect for fishing any type of finesse worm. With an exposed hook. Yep. So it's more weedless than a Texas rig. Uh, you're fishing with an exposed hook so you don't have to drive the hook through the plastic. It hooks more accurately than a bare hook does and it is, you know, it's going to keep the hook locked in when you hook the fish. Now so. a, lot, a lot of people have, have asked us about Texas rigging and if you were, now we know you don't fish a Texas rig because this is superior to it, but if you were to fish a Texas rig when you used to fish a Texas rig, why don't you show what, how you used to do it? Yeah, and here's something, like when I fish a lizard, just to show you, I pull the head off of the lizard and then I'm going to put it up on the jig and push it up there and you can see that head blends in just like the head of the lizard. Looks natural, yep. creature like. Yep. So it's going to do a lot better job of fishing for you. Uh, Texas rigging I've talked about this before and I get a lot of arguments, so we're going to again do some visual demonstrations. I know the big thing out now is these straight shank super line hooks. And back in the day, this is what we used for a worm hook. It's called a sprout style hook, and you can see these slices in the hook shank. Well, that's what kept your plastic up onto the the hook shank so you stick your hook through there you pull it through you pull that down bury the eye and you turn that around well those slices are what holds the plastic from sliding down the hook shank all the time when you're fishing through cover but now during the hooking process and this is why that the super line straight chain hooks are even worse. And I'm going to show you why that you you're not getting the hook through fish because the same thing happens. So you set the hook and that comes through the bass's mouth and it's peeling the plastic down. But see where it's hung? I'll let Shane zoom in. Can you see that right there? Let me get your hands on the light, but let me zoom a little here. Oh yeah, those barbs are popping out. Yeah that barb was stuck into my finger. And as soon as that happens, you see what happens right there? You're not moving the hook any further. And so that stops forward motion of the hook and you never, you've never disturbed the hook back here. You, it, it stops the forward motion? Yeah, and so you waller the fish around a little bit. He's still clamped down on it, but he's still hanging on these barbs. And I'm telling you with those new hooks they've got a great old big spike sticking out there to keep your plastic up it's worse than these little bitty barbs and i can tell you that back in the day when we fished these all the time i couldn't even tell you how many fish i flopped over the side of the boat reached down and picked them up and that's what they were hanging on they the hook point had never penetrated they're hung on the because bar. yeah the forward motion of the hook had stopped it impedes it. Okay. So then we got the people that like to use this setup with the two 90 degree corners. Well, that straight wall right there does, you got the same problem because as that eyelet comes through the lips of the fish and that straight wall hits the bone structure like it's pulled up against my thumb right there, you just stop forward motion of that hook. Can't go any place. Not good for hook set. No. And that's why you lose fish. The other thing, this is an extra wide gap hook style. We've talked plenty about that. <laughs> We've talked plenty about that. Number one is the hook point is, is lined up with the eyelet, so it's got the hook point blocked off. So if you even hook a fish further back in the mouth, it has to go in at a flat angle. can't go in straight up. Um, the other thing is, is you've got two 90 degree corners here and anytime you have a 90 degree corner, it spins on that corner instead of turning the hook up. 
it'll spin on that corner and that's why you're hooking fish in the side of the mouth and up in the edge of the lip and you know there was a picture in a magazine that I just got and there was an underwater shot and it had this style hook and it was hooked in the edge of the lip and that thin membrane that's between the where the head ends and the structure that attaches the lip to the head there's that thin membrane between there well that's where the hook was well it can fall out real easily the other thing that's bad about extra wide gap hooks is they're bent on a kale style and you can see the pole line is right underneath the barb so what happens when you hook a fish, so we've hooked the fish and we're wallering him around and so we've got him in the upper lip and he starts to swim away from us so it'll pop right out yeah what happens he starts swimming away and this comes back over and because the pull line is so shallow it just unbuckles just kind of hay hooks right out yeah so if I we're going to fish a, tradi a traditional Texas rig. If I fish a traditional Texas rig, which I say I don't anymore, I use this setup. And number one is, is you have a leg on the jig, but it's at a 60 degree angle. So instead of getting this spinning motion, it so, actually turns up and it follows your line. So what we're looking at here is a round bend, 60 degree angle jig hook. Mm-hmm. And that's what you use for Texas. Yeah. Now, you don't need the big wide gap hook because I can actually fish this big old Cinco. With a hitchhiker up front. Yeah, on this small hook. And here's why. So we're gonna rig that up like normal. So now when you hook a fish, the hook pops through and the plastic slides up the hook shank and the whole throat of the hook is unimpeded. Instead of the plastic getting caught down in the throat of the hook. All right. These style hooks, I'm gonna put it on. Bury it up here. And so when you set the hook on this, this, the hook pops through here, like such, but this usually ends up sliding down. And guess what? There's what you end up with. Throw the hooks blocked off and you further decrease your, where the hook point's gonna end up. So, that's why, you know, people can do what they want to. I'm just trying to help see that this might improve your landing ratio tremendously. So, so this hook right here, it's going to impede forward motion with that bend. Yeah. And then after it impedes forward motion, this plastic's going to slide back and bunch up in the throat of the hook. Yeah. Just pour hooking all the way around. Yeah. So if you use this style hook, the plastic stays on there. It's not attached to the hook shank. So all that happens is the hook point pops through. That's going to slide up there and the whole throat of the hook. And, so, and it has leverage. Yep. Yeah. Tur turns the hook up. So when that's flat, that being a lever, it's always going to follow your line. So you're going to hook a better percentage of the fish up through the roof of the mouth and further back in because you have a bite on the hook. See the difference in the angle? That's gonna bite in. Where when this style hook. What you're looking for? Oh, uh, this one. The hook point is lined up with the eyelet. Let me just take it out of there. And you can see it's laying completely parallel to the surface here. If it hooks anything, it's going to be barely. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about hooking mechanics. Now, did you? since we're talking about hooking mechanics, how about showing them what happens when you have a 90-degree line tie, Bill? Oh, yeah. 
So if especially the, cro crappie the, fish, yeah, those stuff. that crappie fish, you know, they all use a jig similar to that. Just a ball head jig. It's got a 90 degree line tie. So this just to show you what actually there's a lot of mechanical things happen with anything you fish with once you set the hook. And that's because of the design of the head, where the eyelet's setting, a whole number of things. That people just don't take into account for. Yeah. So seems like companies if, don't even it, think about yeah, it. Yeah, if you crappie fish, you'll know without a doubt. Anybody tells you any different, well, they're they're fibbing. But most of the time, and you're fishing with a bare hook, with this type of jig, you hook fish over in the corner of the mouth and the edge of the skin. And here's why: it's what happens from a mechanical aspect because when that crappie eats your jig, that hook's going to end up flat in its mouth. Okay, I talked about the 90 degree line tie a while ago. Well, here it is. So that crappie's ate her jig, and we're setting the hook, and look what happened. The hook comes out before the head. Yeah, the hook's coming around before the head does. You had no chance of hooking that fish. Well, no. So here's what happens if the hook's over here close enough to the side of the mouth as it's spinning around, it's got a pressure point to hold the butt of the hook enough that it allows the head to spin around then you hooked him in the side of the mouth. Right. Or it comes out and it just barely gets the edge of the skin. And like you said, sometimes you just completely miss it. And it's because of mechanical. You know, I don't care if it's a crankbait. Uh, pin, that, pin that down with your finger and show how it swings like throwing your leg over a fence. Oh, it. when you climb over stuff? Well, just pin it down and show how it swings, like you said in the, in the bath, mouth of the bass. Yeah. Or I mean, the mouth of the crappie. See? It spins on that 90 degree corner. Instead of turning up, it spins around the side. It pivots. Yeah. That's just mechanical properties. And when we come out with our crappie jig, it'll have dual appendage guide arms and it'll rotate the vertical and stick them in the top of the head. So anyway, that's uh, I guess what what little bit I know.